So here we are in build number 27, I believe. Um, I can't believe I've made 27 of these videos. Uh, it's been a blast. Uh, you know, it's one of the things that I think has really added to the this project in terms of how much fun I'm having with it. And you know, you're video videoing it and then you're editing the videos and you're kind of reliving each part of the project twice. So it, it really has been a lot of fun and I'm glad I'm doing it. Um, so today is gonna be yet another Today's video is going to be yet another example of me changing the exterior cosmetics of this car. Very slight. Not a biggie, but still a change. Um, before I get into some of the details there, I wanted to kind of take a step back and, and look at some of the stuff that I've done in terms of um, maybe not at the time realizing that I had this overall goal of, of simplifying it, but that's kind of what's happened. You know, I've simplifying it in aesthetics, not in process. I think we can all agree that I have done just the opposite there. <laughs> I've made it a lot more complicated than it needed to be. But I think in general, I've been kind of hedging towards the, a more streamlined, kind of less busy exterior on this car. You know, that started with the side pipes, um, not going with those. And then even my roll bar, I think, is is a little more streamlined. I don't know how else to put it. Um, it you know, it's a deviation, obviously, from the stock hoops, but I think the lines kind of make a little more sense with the car, in, in my opinion. Um, and then it, right down to the dash, you know, the dash itself actually only shows two gauges and they're centered and the overall, I think, appearance of the dash is a lot less um, busy, I guess, for lack of, lack of better words. Uh, so in general, I've, I've kind of simplified this. So that's that, what I'm going to do today. What you're going to see today is actually just an extension of that. And that is, I am going to forego the use of the Le Mans gas cap. And I know many of you are saying, oh no, please at least leave us the gas cap. No, I'm not. Um, I love that gas cap, by the way. Uh, I've played with it hundreds of times. <clears throat> I love, you know, it, it, the way it latches, the way it unlatches, feels great. It's got good weight to it. It makes a great sound when you're closing it and opening it. Um, but it is that bump on the back of the car that I, I just don't like. So what you're gonna to see today is me fabricating a fuel cap cover. I guess that would be the right term. And um, obviously I can't cover the Le Mans cap. It sticks up proud of the, the fender. So I'm gonna do just the bottom half of that cap. And I'm gonna make a fuel door, a uh, hinged fuel door. It's tricky because that space was never designed to, to accommodate a flip up door or door of any type. So uh, I had to get a little creative as to how I made that part. Um, and obviously it's gonna come down to more fiberglass work, which is what you'll see, uh, fiberglass form. Um, and then uh, how to kind of, how to fashion that plate that I'm making to meet the fender. Uh, and more importantly, how it meets that opening of the fender is a real challenge. So stay tuned for, uh, yep, more fiberglass work and uh, yes, uh, yet another deviation from a stock Cobra. Uh, enjoy.
So I'm going to uh, now try to cut this shape to start roughing in the gas cover. Um, pretty happy with the way this fits. My, uh, my form worked out nicely. Um, so, and, and it's just clear enough where I can kind of see through the opening so I can cut this. But to make that a little easier, I'm going to, using the Sharpie, outline the, um, the opening so it stands up a little bit better in the, through the fiberglass. And trim this to shape. Uh, the, uh, the fiberglass ended up being, uh, it's about 3 16 thick and um, seems to be plenty strong enough. So, that's just a matter of trimming it to shape. So I decided to do a, a fuel cap um, cap, fuel cap cover. And kind of like a modern car, this thing is gonna hinge up like this. And uh, it'll be kind of what you expect to see in, in uh, your daily driver, you know, your, your everyday car. And so in order to make this work, I'm gonna have to come up with a hinge that, that doesn't just hinge it out because if I did that, then you would see a hinge barrel and I don't want to see any, any component, any, any part of the hardware. So it's going to be a hinge that does this and I'm exaggerating that, but it's going to have to lift up and out. So more of a scissor style hinge. And it just so happens that we have lots of examples of these hinges in most every kitchen across the world. So I'm going to take a cabinet style inset hinge and take apart uh, the guts and use that in um, on my gas cap. And the nice thing about those is I sh hopefully I'll be able to utilize the spring that's in there that keeps the cabinet doors closed. That same hinge will keep this closed. It's also the same spring that once you get to a point it click and holds it up. So that's the that's the goal. And that's where I'm at now. I'm going to start working on the hinge before I do any of the more, more of the body work. Um, real quickly on the body work, once I get the hinge set in, just like I did the doors, or we'll be doing the doors, once the hinge is in place and I get the gap set, I will then treat this as it's and treat it as, as if it's a part of the body. And the whole thing is gonna be um, basically filled in one kind of fail swoop. Love that, I love saying fail swoop. Uh, wife hates it, I love it. And so w when, I'm, when I'm sanding this, block sanding this, I'm gonna block sand the whole thing in its entirety.
Okay, here I go again with that four-way stretch fabric and polyester resin. Uh, so I installed a temporary block. First I cut away the body behind the uh, gas cap area and then I installed a temporary block. And after the fabric is taped in place, I wetted it down with polyester resin and then glued, I'm sorry, then secured the, um, the hinge to the block, basically drawing that fabric into shape. Once it's cured, it gives, gives me a perfect recess for the hinge that is hopefully this nice organic shape that's easy to finish. So after the, the resin is cured on that stretchy fabric, <clears throat> I remove the hinge and now I can actually lay some additional layers of cloth that, uh, actually I'm sorry, fiberglass mat in this case, um, that actually give this part or this, this, this area the strength that it needs to support the hinge. Um, the fabric itself, that four-way stretch fabric, is not strong enough to, to use on its own. So it's just, just simply a form to hold, um, hold the fiberglass in place while it cures. Uh, and you can see a kind of a hint of that wooden block behind, then that gets um, removed at the end. And what I'll be left with is just a firm fiberglass shape with some threaded inserts to hold the hinge. Uh, so here's where I ended up. This is after all that sanding you saw me doing and fitting, but as you can see, that gas cap uh, truly is a nice continuation of the fender. It doesn't interrupt the lines at all. And uh, that, I have to say, is a result of finishing this thing in place. So what do I mean by that? Um, this is what I mean. So you saw after I had the fiberglass that, that cover that I originally pulled, pulled from that mold that I made from this. You know, my initial intent was to, to put that in place and grind it and sand it until I got to a nice, you know, even reveal. Uh, that quite honestly proved impossible because this opening is not consistent. It was never designed to accept a door. So the only way to really make this work was to mold this in place. And you can see that lip, I'm hoping this is coming through on the camera, um, exactly matches this profile here. And it does so all, all the way around. And the way I accomplished that is once I had everything in place, um, I masked the outside edge here uh, with plastic, taped it down so it was nice and tight, attached the, the lid to the hinge so I knew it was held in place and then I backfilled in here with long strand 
fiberglass. Uh, that stuff is structural. Um, it's a really good thing to form an edge with. It's not, you know, you can rely on filler to do this, but so this was the right stuff. So what, what that did for me though, is it guaranteed a perfect, two perfect mating surfaces you know, between the lid and the body. Uh, I'm relying on that for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, visually, I, I did not want to gap this like, like say you would gap a trunk or a door. Because, because of the, the, the dimensions here, because of the, um, the relatively small size of this opening, uh, you know, 3 16 gap around here would have probably looked ridiculous. And it would have been really inconsistent looking because of the way, you know, because of this tight radius of the, of the rear fender. So the only way to really, to do this, to create this nice, um, it's actually, it's not even a gap, it's actually, it comes, this lid comes in contact with this entire surface all the way around. So the only way to do that was to, to form it in place. So that gives me just the perfect fit. Here's how, I mean, it works, it works great. Um, holds itself open. I still have lots of sanding to do, obviously, but you tap it and the auto close hinge draws it right into place. So the other advantage with molding this in place and having this lid exactly match the opening is I'm not, re it allows me to not need to rely on that hinge to, to keep this perfectly fit in here. So as the hinge draws down, it automatically finds its seat because it's kind of cork shaped, it's wedge shaped. So it, it kind of snugs in place every time you close it. Uh, that's huge because with this style hinge, and I'll do a quick hinge thing here. Um, this is a, a cabinet hinge, a, it's a, a Blum um, standard cabinet hinge. I have a bunch of these left over from a project. Uh, they have a little bit of play in them, they're designed to, and uh, you know, they're designed to be used in pairs and, and you know, multiples. So uh, they, they're not a, a super firm hinge, which, which is a huge advantage here because as it closes, that hinge has just enough movement to allow the lid to kind of settle into place every time. Uh, the way I was able to recess this hinge into the fender worked out pretty well. You know, I'm not gonna lie to you, it took a ridiculous amount of hand sanding to, to get all of these edges smooth and, and to kind of have them make, make sense visually. Uh, I did a guide coat over everything just to get a better idea how it's gonna look and actually looks great. Um, but uh, there are some mistakes I made and this opening is too tall for the hinge. So I'll go ahead and fill that in just so if somebody does take a peek under the gas cap, they see a nice, nice smooth transition between the hinge and the body. But, uh, but you know, I'm calling this a win. I mean, it, it closes nicely every time. Uh, as you can see, it follows the, the line of the rear fender. And uh, maybe I was just using, making this gas lid, uh, this cover uh, as an excuse for delaying the rest of the body work, but uh, I can no longer delay that. Now I, I have to jump both feet in um, to the rest of this. Guess starting with the doors, which is likely gonna be the next video. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for more.